When the moon hits your eye like a big pizza pie, that's amore. When the world seems to shine like you've had too much wine, that's amore. So today I'm here with uh, Dana Zaccone of GeoVit Vineyard Services in Napa, California. And uh, we're going to do some work here uh, measuring water potential in wine grapes. And Dana's going to help us with that. Dana, you want to just uh, give us a little background of yourself? Uh, like you said, my name is Dana Zaccone. I am owner and operator of GeoVit Vineyard Services here in Napa Valley. I've been running that business for about 20 years. And before that, I was a viticulturist at Domaine Chandon. I've been in the industry for about 28 years and uh, leaf water potential is one of many things that I have done over the past 28 years but it is something I'm focusing on at this point. Okay Dana let's talk about um, the timing of when when to take measurements and um, the parameters of that. Okay for midday leaf water potential we want to take leaf samples at about solar noon. But it's, it's, it's kind of a range right around solar noon, noon. So we can go about 11.45 to say 2.30, kind of in that range is the optimal range. The trick is to be consistent week to week or sample to sample. If you're sampling at 12 o'clock, try to always sample at 12 o'clock. If you're sampling at 2 o'clock, always sample at around 2 o'clock, just so there's consistency in the data and the, and the trends. So what we're looking for, as far as the sampling technique, is a leaf that's in full sunlight and uh, we want to take that leaf, bag it, take it back to the pressure chamber, run the sample, record the information, come back and get another leaf. Depending on how much time you have to spend in your vineyard and uh, how many vineyards you need to, to collect, you can do three leaves, five leaves, ten leaves, however many you feel is necessary to get a decent average. Midday leaf water potential leaf sampling. Uh, sampling technique, we need to find a leaf that is in full sunlight or as close as possible usually somewhere near the top of the canopy or on the, the upper half of the canopy. Depending on the sun angle, you may find a leaf that has a little bit of shading on it. Uh, most of these have a little bit of shading, so it's difficult to find the perfect leaf, but any of these should be satisfactory. So then your process, Dana, is you're just trying to get that um, leaf bagged and back to the chamber as quick as possible? or? Yes, the idea is you take a leaf sample and get it back to the chamber within 30 to 60 seconds. We take a regular sandwich bag, fold the leaf inside of the bag, take a razor blade, slice the petiole off. Okay, we're back at the pressure chamber here and we are going to introduce this sample into the lid. Just slide that petiole right into the lid there. And then we're going to seal that in there and the, and the tighten that down so that the petiole is exposed through the top of the lid. And then we're going to take that whole bag and everything goes right down the chamber, is locked in the chamber, and then we use the control valve to turn the chamber to the chamber position. Now gas starts to flow into the chamber. The rate valve has been preset at about half a bar per second. And now we're just watching the gauge, the pressure increase. We're just watching for water to come to the cut surface of the petiole. And there we have it right there. And that's so kind of what it looks like. 12 and a quarter like. bars. 12 and a quarter bars. So, so Dana, what are, you, what are your thoughts on that 
on the, that reading. 12 and a quarter bars for a vineyard that is uh, three weeks pre-harvest um, and just been irrigated is a pretty good number for midday leaf water potential. For midday leaf water potential, the range that we usually find in the, in the field, depending on, on uh, time of year or you know, stress that has already been in the vineyard, early on we're talking sevens and eights, midday leaf water potential, those move up into 10, 12 range, it's kind of medium stress. Um, what we call high stress would be 14 bars, and then very high stress would be 16 to 18 bars. I have sampled some vines that were in the 18 to 20 range, um, which you would think would you just go out and see this limp vine out there, but they actually look something similar to this. And it's just at midday, they're just not doing much. There's just so much stress at midday, they're just pretty much shut down. Um, so the range, the the uh, with the stem water potential, it sounds like there's uh, less variability on any given day for a sample set of 5 or 10 or 20. Uh, for midday leaf water potential, it's a little bit higher range of, of variability. We may sample, uh, for example, if this block is running about 14 bars as an average, it may be sampling between 12 and 15. It could be a bigger range. And it really is determined on the leaves that you sample. For midday leaf water potential, we're sampling leaves that are just in full sunlight as opposed to stem water where you can get a mix. Um, what are some of the strategies or what are some of the purposes that you'd be using the pressure chamber for? Well, as in most vineyards in California and in other locations, water is a precious resource. So we're trying to optimize the application of water, not only in volume, but in timing, so that we maximize the efficiency of the water the resources, resources that we do have uh, available to us. So leaf water potential is one tool that can be used to uh, use that water very efficiently. For example, Vines that are sampling very low stress, we would not put any water on. We want to know, we want to see those vines start to increase in stress before we do an application of water. We can use the leaf water potential to give us a heads up of a change in, uh, a change in stress. Oftentimes leaf water potential will let us know a week or so in advance of, of vines increasing in visual stress. So if we're using visual stress as our irrigation uh, trigger. The leaf water potential will give us a week, 10 days perhaps, of uh, uh, a heads up to say, okay, we really need to pay attention to this block. And that's when we make sure that we're out in the vineyard looking at it visually. Uh, the numbers may be high, but if the canopy looks good and the weather's okay, then we may push it out a little bit. If we know there's a heat spell coming up and we've been sitting at a high uh, stress level, say 13, 14, 15 bars, then we know that maybe we'll put a little bit of irrigation on prior to that heat event. So it's, it's just one tool that gets wrapped up in, into several others, uh, the visual observations, weather uh, patterns, uh, et cetera, that we can use to make those irrigation decisions. How is the pressure chamber useful in things like uh, fruit ripening or canopy management? Well, for canopy management in particular, uh, when vines are under low stress, they tend to produce more canopy. Just like growing lettuce or broccoli, you want to keep those things non-stressed. With vines, we want the vines to grow to a certain size. For example, the vineyard that we're sitting in now, we want to have about a meter or 1.2 meters of growth. That'll give us enough leaf area to ripen the fruit that's on those vines, on those shoots. We don't want much more than that. So we can use leaf water potential to watch the uh, the, the uh, the stress levels as the vines are growing and the canopy is getting larger and if it looks like the stresses are increasing too much before we get the growth we want then we can add a little bit of water to keep that growth going. Conversely if we, the vines are continuing to grow and they're very vigorous and the leaf water potential stays low, the stresses stay low, then we can withhold irrigation until those vines stop growing. So that's the canopy management part. As far as the fruit quality, for reds in particular, we're looking for a smaller berry size so that we have a better skin juice ratio in the, in the winemaking end of it. And just like a vine that has no stress is going to produce a lot of canopy, the uh, a vine that has no stress will produce bigger berries on average. And so if we want to, we want with the leaf water potential, we're watching that stress and we try to get that stress up, we watch the stress rise so that we can keep the berry size as limited as possible. 
specific situation. Everything is site specific, so it's all vineyard by vineyard. So we're selecting a leaf from a vine here, and we are looking for um, a leaf that is further down from the end of the row, and probably a lower canopy leaf. We're just going to place this foil pouch on there, seal that, and that should be on for at least 15 minutes. It can be on for up to an hour or even longer. We'll come back and we'll sample that in just a little bit. Okay, now we're back here about an hour later. We're going to take this and go ahead and cut this off, cut it up towards the top of the, where the petiole meets back in the vine, and we're going to take that to the pressure chamber and take the reading. Okay, so we're back here at the pressure bomb, and what we're going to do is introduce the sample into the lid from the bottom part of it. So we're just barely coming through the top of the lid, and then we tighten that ring, and inside of the lid is a rubber grommet that tightens down around the petiole and seals the sample into the chamber. Then the leaf, the bag, and everything is going to go down inside the chamber. And we lock the chamber in the lock position like that. Then the control valve, which is the one right there, that one is, is going to fill the chamber. So we, we have the rate valve set at one half bar per second. And then we're going to begin to increase the pressure now. And what we're doing is just watching the end of that petiole to see the end point down. Uh, we do we do five vines in a row with varying leaf heights and some in shade, some in sun, and then we'll do five vines in another section, sometimes up to 20 vines in, sec in groupings of five, so that we're getting accurate readings throughout the whole block. So it's a more of a composite sample than reading just one vine, this vine, this leaf. What kind of variation do you see in, in the fight? Like if you do five readings right there, what kind of variation would you see between those readings and what would be unacceptable? Um, normally you see maybe one bar change at the most, sometimes more if you have like a, a diseased vine, um, and then, but normally those don't get picked for our, for our sets. Just um, so what would be the parameters as far like no, in, in no stress, um, me, uh, maybe light, uh, mo moderate stress, mild stress, heavy stress, what, what heavy, would be? Like once we get into like the... 10 to 13 range we start thinking about irrigating because obviously it's showing some significant stress sevens eights you know like we try to dry farm as much as we can so it's really looking for spikes mm -hmm. for something to be fine 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 it's tracking fine and then all of a sudden dropping dropping crazy numbers that's, mm -hmm. that's what we're looking for that's your that's your so, trigger yeah, for most, irrigation most of our readings are somewhere between four and four and seven somewhere in there okay and that's that's when you're you're in, irregardless of variety or are you pretty much irregardless uh -huh. of variety yeah okay okay so Geovit Vineyard Services uh, provides specifically leaf water potential uh, readings weekly readings throughout the season neutron probe soil moisture readings weekly throughout the season and a reporting that combines those two uh, uh, data points and expected weather uh, past weather historical weather for that time period to make irrigation recommendations.